Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. This article comes to us courtesy of Ivanex, which makes and sells aftermarket Tesla accessories. The opinions expressed therein are not necessarily our own at Inside EVs, nor have we been paid by Ivanex to publish these articles. We find the company's perspective as an aftermarket supplier of Tesla accessories interesting and are happy to share its content free of charge. Enjoy! Posted on March 12, 2023, by Peter McGuthrie Miami's EV Garage is South Florida's first independent electric vehicle service center, offering two locations and a lot of know-how on the new technology. We recently spoke with EV Garage tech lead Jose Rora about the new territory of servicing and modifying Teslas and other EVs, along with a handful of other topics. Above EV Garage Miami, note, Ivanex is using the photo above with express permission from EV Garage Miami. Rora has been working with EVs for over a decade, with past experience at Tesla and with BMW's hybrid and all-electric offerings. While EV Garage Miami is somewhat of a new venture, Rora says the independent EV shop is already gaining traction for filling an important void in the auto community. You can read our full interview with EV Garage Miami Tech lead Jose Rora below. Ivanex, can you tell me about how EV Garage Miami started? Jose, we did a market study of the sales of vehicles and the growing trend that was going on. I mean, I was working for Tesla so I kind of knew the amount of vehicles that were being sold every single day, compared to other manufacturers, at least here in the U.S. And it's evident that they just made a trend that there's no going back from. So yeah, it started with two investors that had this vision and they brought me along, and from there on, I started bringing people from different areas, some from Tesla, some from independent shops, that have helped build this into what it's coming to be. Ivanex, would you say most of the people that you work with have some kind of auto background then? Jose, yes, most of them. Everybody that's here has experience with vehicles or has had the drive to know more or learn. We're pushing towards giving training and showing people who want to get into this, also serving as a small school, if you want to put it that way. So we're heading in that direction as well. Ivanex, so you said before that you were working at Tesla. How did you personally get into servicing EVs? Jose, I started in 2008 with BMW. You know, luxury company, performance vehicles, racing applications, and people love customizing their BMWs. They also have their own clubs and fans for their vehicles, but ever since I started with them, I kept growing within the company as a technician, and I was one of the first to go into training in getting involved in their hybrid and electric vehicle program. Many people didn't want to be involved in it. It was new, it was different and people didn't want to, they were happiest where they were. But I was always intrigued by it, and as I got involved with it, I saw the amount of research and development that these companies were putting towards this. So I saw the potential in this. Also, the competition behind it, because it was so new. This came with a bunch of curves, like parts availability, and the same engineers who were designing the vehicles had very little information to go off of. So with all this, one thing led to another, and I was one of the few in South Florida from all the dealers that were working on the i8s, the i3s from BMW, which were the electrics and the hybrids. 
Then everything just moved forward and Tesla came along. I was about to start with Tesla in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, here in Florida. 14 or 15. And I was afraid because this was when Tesla was in danger. I mean you can even find that online. I regret it now that I didn't take the jump, laughs. So I stayed with BMW for a couple more years, and then finally jumped ship in 2020 right around the pandemic. I worked with Tesla up until now. Yeah, Tesla was different. Very steep, fast learning curve and it's extremely fast paced, Tesla is. It's crazy. And I understand how they've become what they've become really, in as little as 10 years, after the Model S in 2012. I mean, I know they had the Roadster from before, but their main flagship car was the Model S, and after that, it's been non-stop. Ivanex, what are some of the most common services you see Tesla owners coming into EV garage for? Jose, the most common that everybody's familiar with is tires. Tesla drivers love their tires like we love our ice cream. Yeah, they love tires. There are alignments that we do frequently on vehicles. There are some aftermarket suspension components that we install to help with the alignment that helps a lot with tires, so they last a little bit longer. I mean, actually twice the length. But yeah, people come in to customize their vehicles all the time. Spoilers, side skirts, tinting windows. We're in South Florida, so this is very common, to tint your windows. It helps with the heat and the sun. Charge port doors. So many people just are not familiar with using charge port doors, or it's open while charging and somebody walks by it and they just rip the door apart. So yeah, it's very common to the charge port doors. Wipers and cabin filters. Again, with the sun and the rain out here once the rainy season starts, we do wipers all the time. The suspension components get really worn out because of the performance of the vehicles and the amount of power. It puts a lot of strain on the suspension components and also potholes and the weight of the vehicle. So we do a lot of suspension components, front and upper control arms they start squeaking, lower control arms start cracking and coming apart. And then you have your regular fender bender problems, we do them all the time. Front bumper harness repairs or rear bumper harness repairs because you got rear-ended. Or your parking sensors. Those are the most common things we see here. Other than that, it's just regular surprise things that we are not used to seeing. Ivanix, what are some things you think potential Tesla buyers should know before purchasing? Jose, the one main thing for people who are fully considering purchasing a vehicle, so they've already done the research, now they're actually considering it, is range anxiety. Some people are adamant and are like, no, I'll never own an EV vehicle until you get into one. But yeah, the main topic that I usually hear people talk about is the range anxiety. The range anxiety is real. I for a while used to be one of those people that struggled with it. But it's really easy to overcome. Like after a couple of weeks of using your vehicle, you learn. It's like a gas, you just learn how much it's going to give you and if you're going to run empty. People are just afraid that when you go empty it's going to take forever to charge. Instead of, if you go empty your gas tank, 
somebody can come over for $5 worth of fuel at a gas station in a couple of minutes. That is true, but in reality, there are many ways of avoiding this happening. And once you get into these vehicles, not just Tesla, many of the electric vehicles, they have mapped out charging stations in your area, you have a charge, and you're going to get somewhere. It's something you learn extremely quick, and it's not something that's going to be a steep learning curve or that's going to be a problem. Not at all. It's easier than getting a new phone. Like you know when you get a new phone and you're like, now I gotta pass all my contacts and hear how this works. No, it's easier than that, and it goes super quick. And once you start seeing the benefits of it, with home charging, so basically, you're refueling at home, you don't stop at a gas station, it's something you actually take out of your to-do list, it's one less thing. You take it home, you plug it in, and you're done. The next day you have a full tank and you don't gotta fill it up again for four days, depending on your driving habits. So yeah, that's one of the things. The other one I hear a lot is the full self-driving and the autopilot. You know, this is all over the news and people are talking about it. So yeah, the FSD, which is full self-driving, is still in development. Once it's out and fully functional, ITLL will be a game changer. But it's still working its kinks out because of the innumerable variables out there between people crossing the street and variables in the road. I mean, anything really can interfere with the system, and it's still learning. But once it's out, it's going to be awesome. The other one, which is the enhanced autopilot, is a great system. It works on the highways and also changes lanes for you. I mean, it's still a computer. That's what I like telling people, it's still a computer, and it can only react as fast as it can. Thanks for watching. Please like my video and subscribe EVpedia for more electronic vehicle news and updates.